Welcome to Compassion Speaks. I'm Ezra Borrego with the COVID-19 affecting our community. We now face challenges with lockdown, quarantine, and social distancing. Today on our show, we have Marie Stokes from the Salvation Army to talk about her organization is doing to help the community during this difficult time. Marie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's good having you here. And this is this is some times we've never seen before ever. And even like we were talking about before the show started, probably even our grandparents right. haven't seen some of these things. They've seen some other things going on, but you know, with the capacity of how many po the population travel and how things can spread so fast, Absolutely. it's it's amazing that it came from China. Yeah, and is affecting us so greatly here. It, it in is. Sholo. It is in you little Sholo. Yeah. So tell me, what is the Salvation Salvation Army doing? in our community to help out with this and and what are your restrictions that you may have that's that you have to deal with so of course we're practicing the social distancing um, we try to glove and mask as much as we can um, especially when we're dealing with anything that is going to be going out into the public mm -hmm. um, we're still open first and foremost <laughs> there have been a few places that have had to close down because it just didn't feel safe so yeah. we're, our doors are still open the same hours, Monday through Thursday. Um, we're still doing much of the same things except for we've added a Sunday supper to our list of things we do. And okay. it's our way of filling the gap for the community where there is a three day gap where there are no food boxes or hot meals available, especially to a lot of the shut-ins. Wow, so before we get to the Sunday supper and what time all that starts and location, okay. where are you located? A lot, the, this is a new location, probably a year now, maybe? About a year, yeah. Okay. Um, we've moved over to the Wagon Well Plaza next to the hub, and um, it's 5658 Highway 260 in Lakeside, Arizona, right across from the bowling alley, super easy to find, um, have signs above the door, can't <laughs> miss us. What, do you have a suite number? Uh, suite one? number six. Number six, yeah. okay. And so your truck that you have, and it's called Sadie, Sadie? is that what you call it? And what's, yes. the, what's the initials on that? Is Salvation Army Disaster Intervention. Okay. S-A-D-Y. Okay, and so Sunday dinners you have, what time do those start? And where are you doing it? We're doing it over the Hub. Um, the Hub has been gracious enough to partner with us along with Heart of the Cross Ministries, David Sherman. Um, so we park our mobile kitchen over at the hub Sunday morning and we start actually serving. We, we send the um, Meals on Wheels meals okay. and those that are going to be taken out for groups between 10 and 11 and then we start having the public come through to pick up their preferably re reserved orders because it's easier for us to know how many we need to prepare. Okay. Um, but we do p take people that will just drive up and say, hey, I just saw your sign. So between 11 and one to two. Okay. And so you are, you have, how do volunteers get a hold of you and how, how are you, how do you get them to take these meals out and are those the Meals on Wheels people that are doing that for you? Well, some of it is Meals on Wheels, but others is just um, people in the community. Like okay. we have a couple people from the, the Y area, for instance, that said, hey, we'd love to coordinate with our area and find out because they're more in touch with who is in need out there. Okay. So Kathy Pillman and a few others out there, Trey Bowles, have connected with people in their direct communities and said, okay, so we need 40 meals. We'll bring them to this one location and you can pick them up. That way they don't have to drive all the way in. And we're trying to keep the spread, we're, we're trying to keep that down as much as possible. So by like requesting or telling people they don't have to come in a whole car load. They don't have to show me every member of the family right. just to get the meals for the family. They can send one representative just and it will cut down on the spread and, and the, the gathering. You just go by trust with those numbers from that one person to take it back home to them. Absolutely. So where do, where do you get the food that is provided for the Salvation Army to give these awesome hot meals out to these folks in our community? So right now during this time, because we are in a crisis, um, our ED, Salvation Army's EDS, Emergency Disaster Services, okay. they are operating off of their funds for any of our food that we do it. Um, our time is all done on volunteer. 
So the fuel for the truck and the food is supplied by EDS, but the rest of us, it's just a matter of we love our community and we just want to be able to fill that gap and give back. So when you when a, when there's a, not a crisis going on on like right now, mm -hmm. you just get money from charity from people just bringing it in. Yes. So how do they know how to get a hold of you? And and you have websites, you have phone, uh, you have, obviously have a phone number. Mm -hmm. But what's the best way for them to get a hold of you to give a donation uh, or volunteer? Well, there's several ways. They can obviously call our office at 368-9953. Okay. Um, for more information, we also handed out some flyers for anybody needing spiritual guidance or more information on how to volunteer during this crisis um, through David Sherman. Um, we have a P.O. Box, P.O. Box 490 in Sholo, Arizona, that they can always send donations to. We're always open to that. And they can Wonderful. specify if they want it to go for a specific crisis or just stay locally in the community. Wonderful. Yes. Now you you do you you said you have a local website, um, or is it just a PO box that they can send it to? If you well, if you go to the Salvation Army, now there's a way for you to um, click on a certain amount that you want to donate, okay. and you can donate that way. They can send checks okay. um, through our post office box. They can walk it through the front door. Um, we can also take non-perishable canned goods for our emergency food pantry, which then helps go into food boxes for the community. Okay, so when they want to let you know what they want it specifically, spe specifically for, is it on a website or they just tell you or put a note to this, I want this to go to this? However they feel most comfortable. Um, some people will write it in the memo section of the check. Okay. Um, other times, I think on the website, it does give you an opportunity to make a brief comment. Okay. Um, you can also attach sticky notes. We get a lot of, of checks or um, somebody that sends us $10 a month will send that sticky note specifying thank you for applying this to the White Mountains. So we know that it all they want it to stay here. Because okay. we have a lot of Phoenix residents up here too that, that some are up here or that just want to support this area. And because their check will have a Phoenix number, if they don't specify, it will go into that general fund. So. Uh, most of them know by now that they just they want it to stay local they specify White Mountains that's so. okay that's good to yes. know so you have a lot of volunteers do you have any other anybody else that works with you that's on the payroll through Salvation Army I do I have my administrative assistant Karen Howell okay. and she is amazing she's um, it's an answer to longtime prayer <laughs> um, for her and for me um, we've been friends for many years, so it's nice having somebody in the office yeah. that's easy to communicate with. She's familiar with the Salvation Army and, and everything we do and how it needs to be done. And she follows our beliefs, so I, it all Wonderful. really works. So uh, I hope you, you probably know this answer. How long has the Salvation Army been around in the United States? Do you well, we're worldwide. Um, I believe we just celebrated 153 years. Wow. Yeah. So our last, we do an August dinner every year. Fingers crossed, and this doesn't go on too long, we'll still be able to have our celebration dinner um, to celebrate our volunteers. But last year, I believe, was 153. Wow, that's a long time. Long time. I know the YMCA is around that same time. They've been around for a long time, too, yeah. and it's a Christian organization also. How long has it been up in the White Mountains? Do you know, do you know that answer? The White Mountains, um, David and Tina Sherman started this ministry mm -hmm. um, 18 going on 19 years ago. Okay. So, yeah, Wonderful. I've just kind of taken the torch that they have handed me and I couldn't have asked for better mentors. They, everything I know, everything I am, Salvation Army is because of them. They are incredible. Yeah. Last time you were on the show, it was you getting the hat from David and his wife. That was a few months ago, a few months back yeah. that you were on. So we thank you so much for what you're doing up here in the White Mountains, mm -hmm. especially times like this. This is a critical time for all of us. It's a uncertainty. There's a lot of fear in people. Wow. And, and I know you have a lot of pr prayers going out to all those folks. Yes. I don't know if you, were you a part of the, fri the last Friday fast and prayer, your group? It is a, is a worldwide fast and prayer for this whole situation. 
Um, we did in our office internally. Cool. Um, me Wonderful. and Karen. So we we try to play that part. Um, yeah, and then of course we always open up and close our meals with that that group prayer. We have pictures of us standing the six feet apart um, because prayer is such a huge part in it. Um, we need to be running off of faith rather than fear. We right do. Now, so. Amen. I I'm totally full support of that you know why fear is actually something then that is not really real it's something that's produced and we we conjure that up in our head uh, faith is is a thing that's also that we have that can be very powerful especially what took place on friday and what you guys are doing for this community brings them hope brings well, them and a lot of wonderful support that we need is there anything that we might have you have a food pantry real quick before we we uh finish our, our visit today. You have that food pantry, and are, how are you stocked? Are you stocked up pretty good, or you need some help? We're that? not. We have, um, since we've been downsized, we have an emergency food pantry. Um, so we're able to do emergency boxes. We typically refer people over to you. There's a couple of really wonderful full service food banks, like Catholic Charities and the um, Baptist Church here in Sholo that do a really good food bank. So on those certain days, we will typically refer people over to there. Um, but on the days where it's lacking, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday type thing, when we're open on Fridays, um, we do, we'll do as much food. I mean, if somebody comes in and they need food, we're gonna try to find them something. Um, right now, it's far and few between because we're not able to just go to Walmart and run our card for four cases of peanut butter because <laughs> of quantity issues. So right now, it's a little bit tighter, but we're, we're learning other avenues like going through Shamrock, so which has just been wonderful. So to finish up, what are the items that you are looking for the most? Uh, uh, the, say uh, somebody wants to donate some food and some items, toilet paper, whatever. Okay. What, what do you need the most right now? You know, canned meat are always a biggie. Um, peanut butter, cereal, milk. Okay. Um, we can, we've been putting, um, not menus, we've been putting um, together like meals basically and putting them in the box so that we can give people some ideas of what to do with that extra beans and rice that they may get or gar garbanzo beans because <laughs> nobody knows what yeah. to do with garbanzo <laughs> beans. Yeah. So yeah, we're, we're really able to take anything non-perishable. So it all it all goes right back into food boxes and back out into the community. Wonderful. Yes. Marie, it was good having you here with thank us you. for the Salvation Army and thank you so much for what you're doing for our community. Thank you. We, you are very, very uh, needed right now during this time. And stay tuned, we'll be back with uh, some more things going on with the COVID-19 and make sure you're all doing your part in our community. Social distancing, uh, just being safe and uh, just be smart. But remember to give back. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Compassion Speaks. Joining us now on the show is Dr. Tom Barella, president of the White Mountain Autism Foundation. Tom, welcome. All right, thank you for having me. Ezra. You bet, it's good, to have, it. it's good to have you here in a crazy crisis, what's going on right now. It's a, it is a crazy crisis. And we're in the right distance apart right now too. Six feet, six inches. <laughs> we, we measured it ahead of time. <laughs> so yes, and it, it's incredible that in our whole society in one month, has changed. It has. It's changed for everybody just because of a virus. You know, in the past, you went to the doctor and he said you had a cold, you got a virus, get over it. Right. Take right. two Tylenols, call me if something happens. Yeah. It, it isn't that way with this one. Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we have an infection that's potentially lethal where the only treatment that we know that works is not catching it. So I'm staying away from you. Yeah, well, I don't blame you. <laughs> well, you should stay away from me anyways, besides <laughs> that. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what you do and what we do. Uh, I'm on the board also of the Autism Foundation. We're gonna talk about foundations a little bit that are in the White Mountains or find foundations in general and how they're hit with this. Well, 
you know, the White Mountain Autism Foundation and the White Mountain Foundation for Special Needs Individuals has a mandate. It has a mandate to help and to raise money to support those particular populations. It's part of our mandate, it's part of our charter in order to continue with tax exempt status, mm -hmm. which means that we have certain rules for spending the monies that we raise. I mean, right. we go to people and say, we're raising money for to support autism and community education, inclusion for those individuals. Well, we're now sequestered. And at least in the Autism Foundation, one of our biggest fundraising events is, or, is April 18th. Well, it's clearly not gonna happen, and that funds a lot of stuff for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. But you know, Ezra, we're not, in the only, we're not the only ones in that position, right. because a lot of organizations, foundations, organizations, are in the same ballpark that we are. They're gonna have difficulties raising money for their fundraising. Uh, efforts in this year and so um, it it behooves them to spend their money wisely within their own with their own population that they need to serve right. and we're and to be honest we're really struggling um, to to be able to spend that money wisely because the needs are so great I mean we're just a limited foundation as a lot of the foundations are in the world, I, I mean, other than the big corporate type foundations, um, we all raise money through local fundraisers and we, we try to help our local communities, mm -hmm. but the funds are limited and they so are. we struggle. Yeah, and the funds that are in our account right now are funds from what we raised from last year. And so we, this, this thing that was coming up, the spaghetti or the lasagna thing that we're gonna have, was, like you said, uh, the start of the beginning of this year. So, and we talked about on our, uh, as a group through uh, the internet, what we can use, to, what, how we can help out in this. Well, we talked there, a little bit about that. There's, there's the concept. I mean, one of the concepts is that we have the ability to reach out to the developmentally disabled and the autistic community up here because we have had events and the people that support those events and the, and the disabled because our foundation also believes in inclusion. So almost all of our fundraising and events include the developmentally disabled and autistic people. So we, we have that list of potential donors, but also potential needs because those people are out there. And we, we have reached out uh, board members, we reached out through, through the internet uh, because we have those email addresses to try to identify people that have needs. Mm -hmm. We have a program at Christmas time where we identify a great number of needy people and um, we give them gift cards to, for food, mm -hmm. um, that, which, is, which is, we hope, helpful. Um, and, and so we have those mechanisms to potentially to give money away. On the other hand, on the other hand, despite being within our charter, there's the greater good that you have to think about at this time because this virus has shut down the country and now five weeks, we're into it, four or five weeks into it at the time of this taping. And so people are out of work completely. And there's no prospect because we don't have the slightest idea when, when this is all gonna work. Remember though, the whole object of preventing a serious problem in this country is to not catch it. So I don't want to catch it from you and you don't want to catch it from me and I'm doing my best. But that also means that people are out of work. Right. And right. so despite the fact that foundations serve, not only our foundation, but foundations everywhere serve a particular population, we're also mostly philanthropic in terms of thinking about our community as a whole. Right. And I know you've interviewed people that have, uh, connections to volunteer services, food banks, et cetera, 
because that's what we all want to do. So we as a foundation are not only thinking about supporting the developmentally disabled, the autistic, but we're also thinking is, is are there also more efficient means and more broader people that we can reach by donating our monies? And, and frankly, I think what most foundations are going to find this year, that they're thinking about those same things. Right. And, and as you begin to think about it, you begin to think, is it worthwhile to deplete your funds now and worry about fundraising <laughs> in the future? Because that's all, that happens in every business yeah. and every foundation, and, yeah. and we're thinking about about those things for our community too. I agree. You know, we can do some so much with uh, giving some items and things to these folks that may not want to go into the store because they have to be there with their 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 person that is uh, has some limitations. I was watching on the news the other night, and they were talking about kids with autism and how. And we know this, you and I, Tom, for sure. And any, anybody else out there in the community that has somebody that has autism that has to have structure, they have to have a routine. And so they were talking to some uh, family members of how affected this has been on them that they don't have that structure anymore. Get up and go to school, go do this, go do that, come home, you have this routine. Now they're at home constantly and they have to stimulate them. They have to give them something that they can feel more back into the routine of things. Do you think we as a foundation might be able to send some information out somehow, email or, or whatever, how we can do that to, to remind the caregivers, this is what you can do. And some are probably geniuses already on how to do some of that stuff. Well, you know, I'm, your, your point is, is true for everybody. I mean, um, a week ago in the newspaper, a lady, uh, Joan Courtney wrote an article about how you have to change your normal routine. And, and remember, we all suffer from anxiety for this. I mean, right. the whole issue is new to us and anxiety is a big piece of this. And we all thrive on constancy in our environment. You bet. Children thrive on it. I mean, look at, we see lots of stories of parents going crazy <laughs> having to homeschool their kids. <laughs> but the autistic your person you, you mentioned is right there because they do not function well under any circumstance without structure. Um, they don't, they don't, and this is all new structure to them because they can't go to day programs. Right. You know, they may be not be able to get out and, and see their, the, their normal caretakers in, in, in public. Right. I mean, ha we can't even go to the doctor. My last doctor visit was over the telephone. <laughs> and so for the autistic and the developmentally disabled, that is a big problem. That is a big problem. Remember that, and the whole situation affecting the developmentally disabled, many of those families you know, are financially strapped anyway because, um, depending on the severity of the person, the caretaker might, might be in the home most of the time anyway, and so they lose income. Right. And if the other provider is, is, you know, furloughed or loses their job or has hours cut back, then you have an increasing uh, stressful situation. Yeah, that adds the stress to not only try to entertain and take care of these one, these ones that are struggling with this because of not having the routine anymore, that that caregiver is not having income, trying to have a, a structure for them, uh, trying to run everything else that they're doing. That's just taking a toll on on these families. Oh, absolutely. The, the the foundation of the family is knowing what to expect. Mm -hmm. And and with this potential, with this virus, I mean, we see, we see now at the time we're taping the show that at least in parts of the country that the curve is flattened. All the, remember the purpose of flattening the curve was not to overwhelm the hospital system. Right. It didn't, it didn't flatten the, the number of people that are eventually gonna get sick. I mean, uh, the, the area under the curve may be, 
maybe longer or, or wider, which encompasses more people getting infected. But the fact that we're able to not overwhelm the hospital system so that people that do need, you know, emergent care, ventilators, et cetera, we'll have them for them. Right. But it, you know, instead of having the curve that goes up and down, we have the curve that goes like this. And the problem, we, doesn't, we don't know how long this is. I mean, you know, we're talking about opening up the country in a, in a few weeks, maybe six weeks, maybe eight weeks, maybe 10 weeks. Um, and, and we just don't know. And that contributes to everybody's anxiety. And, and, um, and that also turns out to be one of the problems that foundations who are going to give monies, do you give it all now? Or do you kind of spar parse it out thinking that there's going to be people at the end? Now, now people are waiting for their government relief checks, but and maybe that's a good time to do it, but do you wait maybe a little bit because <laughs> some people aren't going to get their government? I mean, it's, it's a real difficult social situation for those yes. of us that sit on boards of foundations. Yeah. This is all new to all of us. You know, we're in charting new territory here. You know, just like you said, when it comes to the amount of time that we have left to quarantine, we don't know that because if we start getting out, okay, let's go ahead and start putting our guard down a little bit. It happened in China. You know, China is starting to get some more um, situations there with the virus again that's coming up. So to close, Tom, um, give, what do you feel that you can say to the community that will help them to be more at ease or to, to be smart wow. in this situation? Well, the number one thing to be smart is to plan the best you can. Use your resources, recognize that there are plenty of organizations up here that are willing to help and, and, and use the information that you have. The newspaper up here has a lot of information about resources that are available to everybody. If you need resources, utilize them. Um, we have a foundation and if you need to, if, if you need help, um, the numbers uh, and, uh, and way to contact us are certainly on the bottom. To be honest with you, I haven't been asking for anybody for donations right now. I would rather have people sequester their funds along with, with themselves to try to spread things out. But if you do have needs, um, the population that we serve, we're willing to respond the best we can. You bet. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for being on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. You bet. Thank you for joining us today. And make sure to get out and serve in our community. Tune in next month to see Compassion Speaks. Get out there and serve your community, but do it in a safe way. Thank you for being with us.